welcome back to the homestead. So today we need to go down and move the netting of our meat birds because we ran out of room with their cage. And so now we need to move the netting down a little bit further so they have more room to eat fresh grass and move out that manure that they're giving me into my other trees. So let's head down to the orchard and let me show you how the meat birds are doing. All right, friends, we are down at the meat birds now. And they saw us coming and they came a running because they want food. That's all they think about is food, food, food. So we're going to move this fence down this way a little bit. We'll bring, incorporate these next two trees, that one and this one in there. So that way they can fertilize these trees. And it gives them some shade and some protection from any aerial predators. So let's go ahead and move these on down. Getting it done. It helps a lot when hubby is here because if it's just me or if it's just him, it takes forever. All right, we got it up. Now we need to just go through and make it a little bit tighter so that way it has some tension on it and it's not dragging out at the bottom to cause it to short out when we attach the electric to it. So one thing that I noticed is that they tore up the comfrey that we had inside next to all of the trees, which is really good. The only one they didn't touch is the one that was over there, but they got the ones that were here and there, which is really good because it's really good for them. Comfrey is excellent for the chickens. So now we need to go ahead and put in their tarp to keep them away from any aerial predators. They can go underneath when it's either raining or if it's too hot or if there's you know aerial predators, they can go underneath the tarp to keep themselves safe. And then also their trash can with all their food, we put that in as well. All right, so the fence is now electrified. We got everything hooked up. I touched it and it is working because it shocked me. <laughs> but I am really glad the chickens are in this part of my orchard. These are the bigger trees that I have. I've got tons of comfrey in here, so I really want them to be in here eating the comfrey and then also leaving a bunch of manure in the tree area so that way it fertilizes my trees. So when this winter, when I go in over winter and put down some new mulch, it'll have all the fertilizer on the bottom and then on top will be all the wood chips and everything that I'm gonna do to overwinter all of my fruit trees. And then next year, fingers crossed, I will have an abundance of fruit on these trees because they have yet to produce any fruit. I think it is due to our surprise freezes that we get in April after everything has bloomed and it just kills all of my flowers. So. Here's to next year and some fertilized trees. All right, let's head back to the barn and I'll show you what I got going on over there. All right, we are down at the barn. We need to go ahead and feed everybody and get them ready for bed because it's about six, what, about seven? It's gonna start getting dark here pretty soon, so we're gonna go ahead and feed everybody and get them ready for bed. Hey, Snuffleupagus. What's the matter, sir? Are you, are you hungry? Here's Miss Fiona. We are still working on her hoof. She is still having a lot of issues with hoof rot. 
So I actually got something in the mail today. It's a, a little booty that you put on them, plastic. And I'm hoping that that will work and I got some new medication to put on it. Fingers crossed this works. Just, it's a daily thing with her, having to constantly put medication on it and cleaning it out. It's nasty, it's really, really bad. And I was told that it is something that stays in the ground too for about seven days. So I bought some barn lime today. Tomorrow I'm gonna come out here early in the morning and put some barn lime down all around her pen. She has not been anywhere else but inside there. I'm gonna go ahead and probably end up doing it for Henry's pen and Sniffle's pen in the near future just to prevent any kind of issues in any future sheep, goats, cows, whichever we get that have hooves over here in the barn. Let's see how Henry is doing. Hubby said he's getting big. I can't tell because I see him every single day, but ooh, almost knocked over something. Coming, Hacker. He's definitely getting big. Now let me go show you what I wanted to show you. I've got a few new babies. Isn't she cute? It's a little Americana. It was a blue egg that I put underneath her, so I know for sure it's definitely a Americana mixed with something else, a rooster of whatever we've got. Oh, cute. That's so cute. She's so cute. Good mama. Is it hatched? Yay, my second baby. I've been waiting for to see if it hatched, and it did. So let's see how she looks. Oh, she was a blue egg also. Oh my goodness. Look at her. This was another blue egg, so which means it's another Americana. I love my Americanas. She's still a little bit wet, so she just came out of the egg. So I'm gonna go ahead and put her back with mama. I absolutely love it when the babies hatch. In the lake, mama. <laughs> All right, the last thing I will show you is our mama with the nine babies. We moved her from the small area to the bigger one. So let me show you how she's doing with all her babies. We've got one that escaped. They can get out through that little spot. So we're gonna have to figure out what we can do to keep her from, keep the babies from getting out. All right, friends, we're gonna go ahead and call it an evening. Thanks for hanging out with me as I uh, get our meat birds moved to the next part of their pasture. Until next time, friends, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends and family. As always, I hope all is well and have a blessed day.